Greetings, everybody. My name is Karku. I just got destroyed by a flanking TikTok Mora two times in a row today and lost both games. Some of you might say, Karku, why are you encouraging TikTok Moras? Well, because it can work if done correctly. And I have none other than Nolan in the chat. And Nolan was also a guest on my One More Tip video many, many years ago. And he is on his, he was on his alternate account. I'm in this game and we could do nothing about him. And he absolutely dominated the game with what I like to call threat aggro. And that's what I think is the strength of TikTok flanking Moira. It's when you draw attention or you make space for your team by simply pulling the enemy to look at you. If you can take three people on, three people turn around, your team is in a 4v2 advantage, right? Think about it that way. So let's watch his POV. He's in the chat right now to answer any questions. Let's see what you did here. I'm assuming you're starting here because obviously you want to just see how much uh, you can pressure in their back line. You don't know what my team is running here, right? But do you always start in a flank position every game? Okay, this is a good spot though. You can kind of just like scout. You see we had Bastion, Kiriko. Just throw a damage orb, get ult charge. Okay. Yeah, okay. So off the bat, what do you look for, Nolan? Do you look for, are there any heroes that like bo bother you the most as a as a flanking Moira? I would assume maybe like Torb. I would say even Bastion's probably like pretty annoying. Is there anything you, any hero you look, look out for specifically? That's like your biggest threat to this play style. Nolan says, always start flank in payload mode to look for the enemy comp and then adapt your playstyle accordingly to the enemy comp. So I'm sure you looked at this and you see, okay, the only thing that can stop the, the flank Moira is maybe if you get pinned, the raw DPS of Bastion and a sleep dart from Anna, I would assume. So you're just looking at the enemy comp and trying to adjust. Okay, that's cool. So you see, those are the three threats that I would assume. You can't heal from this range, so I'm not sure. I don't know if you're trying to tell your team to get close, but I guess with the recent Mora changes, you're not even worried about wasting your juice. But like, cause now if you just throw a damage orb, you get your juice back instantly with this new buff. So it's all good. Okay, there's a Winston in front. You're still holding this position because if you look at this comp on my team, nobody can threaten you up here. Now our team swapped to Echo. Maybe Monkey can jump you or like as Kiriko, I can climb up. But you just chill here until you feel like there's a threat. Now you get threatened. You heal orb, now you see two people on you and you're like, okay, we heal orb, now you're challenging two, my team challenged you. Then you try to fade out. And now you're kind of screwed here. So my team actually made the adjustment and capitalized on you. A lot of flanking TikTok Moiras in the low ranks will flank like this, but they'll never adjust and they're very one dimensional. I think what makes Nolan really good, obviously he's a rank one Moira player, but I'll make the adjustment. Hey, look at what he's doing. He's actually healing because there's no time to flank right now for a little bit. I mean, their entire, his entire team is dead, so there's no one to heal. So now he's going to get into a different position. There was no one to heal. The healing person's gone. So the only thing he can do now is you can just AFK. The traditional Moira would just die and reset with the team. But because you're so slippery, it's like, why not take some space? Okay, so Nolan did say there's already a minute off the clock, off the original push. But he actually shouldn't have died there if he played that correctly. So that was a little bit of a mistake. Sure. Okay. But here, he decides to, like, fade all the way back here because he could reset with the team or just, like... Hold the space up here. There's no one to challenge him. He looks for the sleep dart, so I guarantee you, I haven't played it yet, but he's probably gonna jiggle to the right to go into cover because he anticipates a sleep dart. As a TikTok more, you gotta realize what's gonna stop you sleep. He's probably gonna go to the right. He's a high elo player. Oh, okay, so he, do you see what I did? This is not even just like a flank Mora skill. This is just an Overwatch skill. You know the sleep dart, you're challenging a Mora, or sorry, the Anna. The Anna's looking at you. You just jiggled into cover to see if he, they're gonna, he's gonna fire out the sleep dart or not. That's normal, he doesn't see it. So he's just, he's going back and forth to try to see it. Cause sleep dart's a slow wind up and you can hear it. So he's waiting to react to it. Yeah, not firing it, not firing it. Okay. Now, he fires an orb, bouncing up and down, because it's lots of heals, so he can just hold here and uh, consistently pressure on the back line. So what this is doing is, like, he's not over committing. What he's doing is he's making two people turn, just like this. Bastion turn around, Ana was looking, Winston jumped. He's pulling pulling threat aggro, attention aggro. Now, I, I remember, I, I sent myself up here, because I'm like, oh, shit, there's a Moira up here, let's go. Okay, so then he decides to fade away, because he, he sees three people on, and now, I mean, the payload just got captured and we were able to send three people. Now, I'm going to spoil the rest of this game on my team as red team. We don't make it very far in the payload. These were two deaths early in the game from Nolan, but I don't think he dies anytime after that. This one was more of like, okay, there's nothing, nothing happening. He's, uh, he's just trying to like build his ultimate charge. So our team is committing onto a bunch of cooldowns here. Uh, Nolan is 
on blue team, right? Yeah, so he's waiting to spawn. Okay, he's coming back. Let's see what happens here. He's healing for a bit because there's nothing else to do right now. There's no time to get into position. He's actually heal orbing. Look at that. Damaging, damaging. We see a Kitsune. Waiting for the primal to end, getting to a safe spot, seeing how the fight's going. His team is blue. He is up 4v5 right now. Not over committing yet. Waiting, waiting. Because they're up a kill, I don't think he needs to expend the Coalescence yet. I think Coalescence is powerful if you can get into the backline. Waiting, waiting for the Bastion. They're all in that room. Okay, now he goes back here. Dodge the sleep dart. Okay. He waited until like my red team over commits over here and then he goes for the supports in the back line. And against Kiriko Ana, again, the only threat is sleep dart. So to kind of watch the movement here. This is incredible value because he's taking two supports out. Right? So he knows sleep dart's a threat. He'll damage orb. It cancel into coalescence. That's a tech. Double damage. Like you have damage of this going. He knows sleep dart's coming, so he strafes. So one thing you do as uh, when you're coalescing, you have so much movement speed. When you start the coalescence, you can start in one direction and then strafe in the opposite, right? To kind of like bait out the sleep. Now there's no cooldowns, he's screwed. So he just accepts the death. Knows I'm jumping for him. Your monkey, his monkey came to help him. So now he's... He's fine here. Now there's no nothing to flank really, so he's just pocketing, building all charge. It's okay to it's okay to throw in the the healing orb as needed because you just build faster ultimates, right? The monkey was low. That's good good value for all charge. Chilling here, chilling here, using natural cover. Now there's nothing to do. Try to just throw the orb off cooldown. Get the coalescence. Forty percent. He got jumped by monkey. Oh, he ended up fading. Okay, he messed up there. That's okay. I think he wanted to fade out. Oh, he got rezzed. Okay, everyone's low. The Mercy is alive on his team and pocketing the rest of the team, so he knows he can now try to make some space in the back line. Just annoy them. Annoy them a little bit. If they start turning, fading. Faded to dodge the sleep dart. Still here, but closer to cover now, because no fade. Okay. Damage. Like, we're all stuck in this room. And once he sees them commit a cooldown onto him, fades out. Now, what this is doing is now that there's, there's one person in the back line, Monkey wasted a jump here. So my team, we're all huddled in here. This kind of gives the, t the enemy or his team an opportunity to jump in like this, right? So he's... That single jump back there kind of forced... Uh, it forced my tank to jump the Moira. So now me on my team here, we're stuck in this room. We have no tank taking space in the front. Instead, our tank is jumping for the back. And Monkey doesn't do enough burst damage to kill Moira reliably. I think jumping uh, in a Moira by yourself as Monkey is not the wise play. You don't do enough damage to solo her. She self heals, heal orb, everything. It's not enough. The jump here is fine if our team committed together, but we didn't. So now he can just safely stay here. Didn't even have to burn fate. I don't think he panic faded at all when Monkey jumped. Let me see this again. All right, he didn't have fade right now. That's okay. He doesn't need to. He damage orbs or heal orbs. Knows he doesn't need to fade at all. And the Anna came to help. They're all stuck in this room. Waiting, waiting for, uh, try to wait for the rail there. I think that's what he was waiting for. Just doesn't, doesn't burn fade in panic here. Sees this, sees the energy build up, and then tries to time it. Well, three damage orbs. Waiting for the ultimate right now. Keep strafing, strafing, strafing. The damage orb actually ended up killing. Oh. Oh, surviving. My back one gets slept, woken up by accident. He's like, I'm taking that. The sleep dart is down, so there's no CC now. In a comp like this, we swapped off the Rhine charge, so Monkey has no hard CC to stop Coalescence. Only way to stop Cole is to actually just kill the Moira. And the sleep dart was done. After getting woken up, the Coalescence is free. Pops it. Okay, ends up dying, but kills one in exchange, and then their team has all the space, they win the fight. Just reactive, not over, not, no, doesn't overly panic. You meant to fade jump on top there. Oh yeah, I saw that, Nolan. You want to fade jump onto the top of the, the phone booth. Let me, let me take it to chat. Are there any questions for Nolan while he's here? This is a pretty short game. We're almost done. Or why is it called TikTok Mora? Because it got popular on TikTok lately. Because people were complaining about Mora's not healing. So I'm just showing what one of the best Mora's in the world is literally doing that. 
but like flanking but yeah oh heal or damage orb so nolan just said he's known as a dps mora but actually 90 percent of his orbs are still healing orbs to be honest do you need a good second healer for this to work that's a good question you should answer that nolan says always won't be able to do this if i have a lucio slash zen as the enemy could just turtle and poke my front line as a win condition true how do you counter this play style in your opinion. I have my idea on how to counter it, but it just requires coordination, to be honest with you. He says, honestly, there are many counters depending on my variant of the TikTok Mora. Sometimes it's good to go no backline Mora, but it is sometimes it's good to go full rush, but I've been having difficulty against hogs or one shots in general. So hero specific to counter the TikTok Mora. Roadhog obviously won't take that much damage, self-heal, and then you have to worry and fade the hook. That one's a bit more of a skill matchup. You just feel a lot more ineffective, I suppose. That's probably the takeaway answer from, uh, from Nolan on how to counter it. So just one shot, threats of just getting killed. In addition, Roadhog, Junkrat, Hanzo, super annoying to 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 deal with as a flanking Mora, but his variant is that you have to adjust. Sometimes, like he said, it's good to actually not go back. It depends on their composition. It really does. So Nolan recognized that this was a comp that he could do it on, although he does have junk the Junkrat Torb. The Junkrat Torb were busy in the front, and he was just capitalizing on me and um, my Ana in the back line. Double supports, waiting out the, the sleep dart, and that's it. Okay, let's keep watching. Okay, so he actually is healing orb. So like he said, he is heal orbing a lot more than you guys give him credit for, or what, what his reputation gives him credit for. More healing orbs. Especially when fighting a tank, healing orbs more effective than the actual damage. Just surviving is, is space against tank. You're not gonna like damage orb. The damage orb is mostly to kill a 200 HP hero. The healing orb just to survive and be a nuisance and keep generating that threat. Another heal orb, that's like four heal orbs in a row. All right, he noticed he's got nothing. Oh. He, he looked back. Do you see what he just did there? He didn't run. Well, he was running because he had orb. Orb cooldowns down. We headshot him. 8 HP. Faded really far away. Kind of messed up the jump at the end, but he realized he wasn't chase they, we weren't chasing him anymore. Because I know when I, when I saw him do this, I was like, I think he's just gone, gone. I'm not going to over chase because it's so hard to chase a Moira. Because I thought she faded way up, but she actually, he actually messed up the jump. And he's still here, but he's, he recognized that, wait, I'm not getting chased. I'm going to stay here and keep creating space. Self heals in case like they look at him. Yeah, Mon Monkey might have been able to zap him. Still in here. Still in here. Heal orbing again. That's like six heal orbs in a row. Running back here. And this is what I mean by threat aggro. Our entire team has to just worry about him. And then the damage orb comes in. The damage orb comes in now against squishies. Right? I'm trying to challenge him a little bit. And then he pops Cole here. He's, he's got the cooldowns. Remember, Cole lessens self heals and you move super fast and can't get canceled. And then boom. And that's the round. By simply just playing back here, he was just throwing a damage orb, jiggled cover, didn't die to Junkrat. I stood still here because in a straight 1v1, like even if I strafe as a Kiriko trying to hit the Moira, Moira's not gonna miss because the hitbox is ginormous, right? He's not gonna miss. So I didn't overcomplicate it. So I try to focus on hitting my kunais by standing still. That was the reason why I stood still, which is a tip to, to help fight against it. Um, but I popped Suzu when I saw my HP getting low. Then he decided to fade out too. But then he's like, you know what? Suzu's down. Nobody else is looking at me. His team is taking space. He pops Coalescence. It goes through barriers. I mean, what can you do against that? Absolutely nothing. And then he dominated that round. And then on offense, I think this one was just like, they just needed to capture the first point. So he's actually, like it's hard to find an angle to, to, to flank right now. So he's not flanking yet. He's adjusting to the play style. So again, the problem with the metal rank TikTok Mora is no matter what this, a TikTok Mara would be like, all right, it's time to go flank again. How are you going to get through this room in here? You'd have to go all the way, all the way this way. There's too much time wasted. So he's actually playing with the team, adjusting to the play style. Okay, he saw the rock, fades away. More heal orbs. Not TikToking yet. Not TikToking. There's no time to do it yet. They're all huddled in the corner. Just not overcomplicating it. Took a lot of damage. The heal orb there was to mostly build alt charge, sure. Tons of healing.
Oh, now he goes for the flank. He faded right through them. Oh my god. Okay, so why did you decide to do it now? He knows we're all huddled in this room. He checks the room, sees Junkrat, and he's like, well, he could be... He, I guess you could arguably fade out, but he decides to fade through and then take the aggressive space after building 60% all charge, keeping the Winston alive. And then he goes back here. Okay. Now what this is going to do is force us to play here because now we have to look to the right and we have to look to the left to deal with this. Once the team has taken like the space here, then he went through. If the game, if the round just starts and your tank and your team is all here and then you fade through, I mean, sure, you can just stay in cover and wait. But like the best time is like to re-peek and suck people off right now is when we're also focused on their tank right now too. I usually start with that crazy fade, but I decided to play earlier because it makes so much space. Okay, well, I was totally wrong because Nolan just answered. You actually start on King's Row and you actually just fade right through. It does make space if it's clean, if you actually make it all the way through. Sure. I don't think it's a total blunder. It, it, I guess it was just like you kind of had to, you didn't know our team comp yet, right? So you weren't sure if you went for the crazy, you go for the crazy fade to phase through just yet. But I guess once you recognize it, you build pretty close to coal. The threat is here. You're pulling aggro on both sides. Okay, you get a little low. Oh, you actually damage orb, but I mean, you're safe, so you actually went for the damage orb because your monkey was kind of jumping. Your team gets a kill. And he fades back out. You're already up 5v4. I guess you didn't have to press the advantage. You just wanted to build the rest of your ult charge, so you just kind of faded back in, I assume. I guess you, you're you 88%. You could stay here and, I guess, damage orb and build your coal, but you're already up a person, so you just make sure everyone's healthy. And then pop, top it off and then pop coal. And then confirm the point. All right, we definitely lose the rest of this. Dodges the rock. They try to counter coal, but you self-heal so much and you're getting damage boosted by Mercy. You can fade this, so he's waiting. I think he's getting chosen by Sigma. He was not the chosen one today. Fades out from random bullshit damage. Heals as needed. Okay. Not flanking yet. Waiting, assessing. Assess the situation. He's probably gonna go for it in a few seconds once he notices there's a couple people committing here. We'll see, Junkrat's here. Okay, now playing it a little bit safer first. Maybe it's waiting for some ults to come out. Fighting his time. A little defensive, but the enemy team is expending so many cooldowns. No time yet, and they're coaling, so... Taking an angle, pulling some attention, and then backing up. Okay, restarting, waiting. He's got coal here, so he's probably gonna fade in. Damage boost into coal. Or, sorry, damage orb, and it worked. It does so much burst damage, and you just strafe like crazy. Like, especially against Torb, and that's it. I think he lost the game after this. Yeah, the game is over, you just pushed off that. Waited, and then it did a deep fade. Waited till the shout was the shout's still up, right? Or you waited till shout was over, throw the damage orb, and then pop the ult. And then watch the movement. Do you see how he's like strafing when you're coalescing? Movement is also like not even not a, really like a Mora thing, but just an Overwatch skill. Low ranks, especially with this movement speed, you have to strafe when someone's challenging you. Watch how he moves against Torb's POV. This Torb could not hit him. Cause every time he goes left, he goes right, he goes left, he goes right, left, right, left, right. AD strafing. How do you hit this as Torbjorn? You'd have to land back-to-back -back dinks here. Boom. Boom. Oh, faked him out. You can't do it. And that's the game. Um, you can watch till the end for a crazy rollout I often use for third point. Okay. Oh. Oh. More Mora tech. If you want to take high ground as Mora, I think a regular fade just jumping normal won't make it up there. So you just jump up onto this. Jump onto the blue box, onto this box, and then fade up. And now you can take high ground here. Okay, very cool. Good tip. And then I'm going to read out some of uh, Nolan answering some chat's question while we watch the rest of that. Did the Moira recent buff with damage orb uh, giving heal juice change anything? He says it doesn't change anything in higher ranks. You actually never run out of juice anyways. That's true. Most good Moiras would have good resource management anyways. It'd probably help the average player, but not so much at the high level. So another heroes that are really annoying to against DPS Moira, self-reliant DPSs that can uh, self-heal, like Mei, the Ice Block, Reaper to fade out and self-heal with the damage, and Torbjorn because you can press overload. DPSs that don't require as much healing resources so you can't confirm any kills would be pretty good. Okay, and that is the how, how Nolan 
DPS Moras, thanks for coming in the chat for a little bit. I appreciate it. And maybe the audience learned something. And like I said, not incur not like hard encouraging this playstyle because I honestly, and I think Nolan would agree, most people don't do it right, which is why like it gets memed on all the time. But you saw it there. Like he's not. The problem with doing DPS Mora is it's too one dimensional. And like Nolan said, he actually heal orbs a lot more than you think. You're not just perma damage orbing and sitting in the back line. It's actually it's it's a bit more calculated than people think. Play cover. Check how much uh, threat, how much, how much aggro you're pulling, and adjust accordingly. Right there, you go. Thanks, Nolan, for joining. I appreciate it.